Okay, in this video, this is going to be my first attempt at uh, trying to nail down a technique for creating a Jaguar skin print. I haven't been able to find a stamping plate or anything like that that will do a Jaguar skin. And I, I find their coat beautiful, and it is different from a leopard. It's definitely different from a cheetah. Um, a lot of cats have gorgeous patterns or prints. In any event, you see here three of my attempts to do the Jaguar skin. Let me zoom in. There we go. I think that's a little better, a little bit easier to see. This is my first attempt right here. In the video, I'm going to show you some of the pictures that I was using to help guide me. Um, the interesting thing about the Jaguar skin is there's almost a grid in between uh, what we would, I guess we would call their spots. Um, and it's not laid out on a really firm pattern. It seems to kind of have a sinuous and branching quality to it. Uh, and this was my first attempt. I don't think I did, well actually this is my number two attempt. My first attempt I did in uh, green and blue and I used all gel polish and, and the gel all runs together and that just didn't work well. So I tried my first actual Jaguar print here, a base coat of gel polish, um, and then I used some acrylic paints to help create a grid and then to do the spotting. And it looks all right, but I don't know that I quite nailed it. So I tried it again, once again, a gel polish um, nude underneath and then acrylic paints to create a lighter area that created a grid that I could go by. Um, and with both of these, I also, you'll notice when you look at the Jaguar's coat, um, the spots are darker inside than the fur that's running in between. So um, with these first two, I actually with all three of them, I used something to change the color of the spots and make it a little bit darker or more contrasty. This is my last attempt. And with this one, I used a combination of acrylic paints, um, a gold chrome powder that I got from, uh, I think, Pretty Diva or something. Mm -hmm. Not very good powder uh, for a chrome, but it worked. It, it, it was pretty in this. I mixed it with water and some acrylic paint and used that to create uh, what I call the grid. And that came out really pretty. Um, but for the spots, this time I used a, an inexpensive dry watercolor kit and I got it wet and I let it get, you know, kind of mushy and it behaved more like an ink instead of a wet paint because with the acrylic if you get the wrong texture it wants to run it run together and you see that here and here a um, little bit here where it's kind of light and it wants to do that uh, that aquarelle effect and I didn't have that problem with the watercolor it stayed really nice and intense it dried quickly it behaved more like a paint without the thickness of the paint uh, and I found it easier to work with. So I'm going to show you a few products that I used here really quick. Be right back. Okay, so here is my product overview. First, I prepared the nails with one of these nail colors. I got this for reviewing a polish on Amazon. Sexy Mix give you different feelings. I love that. I don't know what the color is called. Here is my little sample dot under a couple different kinds of light. The number is 1542. I used this for these two. Whoops. Yay, girl. Okay, we'll get rid of this because we're not going to use it. The second one that I used and I liked it better is another Sexy Mix, 1435, another neutral. It looks a little greenish gold to me. I'm not sure how it's going to show up on camera because of the different lights that I'm using, the time of day and all of that. That's what I used on this. 
so we're going to keep that. Really inexpensive acrylic paints that I got from probably Walmart or something like that for the grandkid. This is the Pretty Diva Super Cheap Chrome Powder that I used. No other markings other than it's number two, but I think you can see that it's got a really pretty gold sheen to it. And another inexpensive watercolor kit that I'm going to drop water on. And then these are some of the tools that you're going to want. Something like a palette knife so that you can mix these acrylic paints down. Or a silicone tool like this. This actually works if you've got a curved surface. You kind of get down in there. <clears throat> Some kind of lining brush. I've got long ones and short ones. What is this? Royal and Langfield 2010. That's this short one. Probably got it at Michael's. Lone Cornell. Soft com comfort liner. And I don't see another, oh, it's a number one. <clears throat> a dotting tool, and I think you want to go kind of small with this. I ended up using this end most of the time for this nail here. And then something flat and stiff for cleanup. With a nice clean edge. So the first thing that I need to do before I get going with the nail itself, I need to get some water onto this black and give it time to soften. So I've got a little uh, container of water here and an eyedropper and I'm just going to put a few drops of water onto the black. And I'm gonna let that soften up before I get started doing anything else with the nail. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added some water and it's actually absorbed quite a bit. And you'll find that depending on how quickly you can work, you're going to want to add more. I'm going to go ahead and put some water in the bottom of these trays because I need to thin out this to infill the spots and make them a little darker. And this needs to be thinned down so that it can accept and show the, uh, the powder as well as possible. Boy, I hope I'm showing everything all right. Okay, so first I'm going to start working with this cream color. And I'm going to mix some extra water in here and I may need to add some extra paint as it dries up. I didn't think I would like this palette, but actually I do. I like this. You're not going to need very much unless you're going to do a whole bunch of nails. Because you really don't want these grid lines to cover up the background polish too much. I'm sure that there are some cats whose fur is cream and, and it might be kind of contrasty, but I didn't find the pictures that I used from online to be like that. Into this, I'm going to mix some of this Pretty Diva Chrome Powder. I'm not sure it really matters what you use. Whatever you think is going to look pretty. Maybe you've got a really pretty copper shade or something like that. Use it. And again, just kind of get that mixed in. If you feel like you need more, use more. But you should know that because this acrylic paint has been thinned down so much with water, um, the goal is to get it to leave a haze, you know, instead of actual paint. So if you get it right, then you should have a nice gold shimmer and a slightly creamy haze. Let's get started on a nail. Okay, so I'm going to go with this sexy mix, number 1435. 
because it's a little counterintuitive, but I like how it came out on this nail a little bit better. You could use any color combination you want to use, but I think the things to remember are that the background and the spots need to contrast. Um, the grid pattern that I mentioned and when it comes to making the spots themselves you'll see that there are certain how should we say types of patterns repeated little C's dots connecting together um, unnatural L's and you can see this isn't the best. I'm going to do a second coat, but it, it really doesn't matter um, how this foundation layer looks as long as it's not, you know, ter terribly messed up. Um, there's going to be a lot more going on. So we will cure this for the recommended period of time uh, one minute in an LED, two minutes in a CFL UV. Okay, so this is the foundation that we really need to lay for this pattern. This is where we're going to lay the grid pattern. And you have time to play with it. And if you don't like it, let the acrylic dry and swipe it off with acetone. It'll come right off. And I like to use this liner. It's long and it lets me sweep across a long nail. Use whatever you prefer, whatever you have more comfort handling. You can see how loose and wet this is. And I kind of want to saturate the bristles, saturate the brush. I don't want it dripping, but I want to be able to lay a nice line comfortably across it. Okay, I think you can see. So you're going to just pick a place to start and kind of a sweeping you can make it be a little more jagged, but I like to use a more sweeping and sinuous line. Don't worry about that. It's going to stick, it's going to dry. I didn't wipe the sticky layer off. I didn't put on a top coat and buff. If you wanna do all of that, you can. Um, I feel that it adds more steps and more layers. You can see how this is drying now. Lordy, I hope this camera is focused. And you're going to notice that some of these lines occur in parallel, but not perfectly. So to the side, I'm going to do something kind of like this. And next to it, I'm going to do something a little more... Remember, if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. But I'm going to I'm going to go with it to start. I like doing that. Don't go too nuts touching up. You'll end up making a mess. You'll end up with too many layers of this thinned down acrylic and it just doesn't look very nice. So at this point, I'm going to want to start laying out that that grid that I was talking about. Let's pick up a little of this. Remember, if you lay down too much and you want to move it right away, wipe off your brush, dry it off, and then use it to pick this up. You can get a lot of it. Nothing to beat yourself up over. And so I'm gonna start again at the top and I'm gonna lay something that kind of runs across. And I'm gonna keep running lines across in kind of a random, sinuous nature so as to create a little bit of a grid. Sometimes you wanna create a triangle because you'll see that in the cat's coat.
brush, this flat brush here, and I'll just pull that off. If you let it dry, it doesn't work. But if you get it while it's still wet, you can pull a lot of this off. Finding that I really prefer working with this dry watercolor right here. Let me zoom out so I can show you that again. Um, <clears throat> but it takes a little time to get it to just the right consistency so that you're not uh, overloading or, or putting in spots that are too dry. So some of the things that we need to do as we're putting in the spots, let's keep in mind respecting this grid pattern and some of the shapes that we see repeated, those being spots, L's, dashes, little C's, which often look like they're made up of spots, and we just go until it looks good. All right, I'm gonna hyperlapse this for you. Okay, so now that you've done the spots, you need to let this dry as well. And uh, the more you practice, the quicker you're going to get. Um, it is important to get the right consistency of whatever you're using for the black dots. It's important to get that right. Who knows, maybe somebody will figure out a really cool hack using uh, Sharpie pens or something like that. Um, I did not find that buffing the top improved the behavior of these watercolors over what I've been doing these past few days. So um, I'll be back 
when it's time to top coat this and show once again the final result. Okay, so to recap, we have my first three attempts here. The first one with gel polish only, and it didn't come out very well at all. Second one with gel as a base, and then acrylic paints over the top. Same with the third. This is the fourth, and this one I tried the dry watercolor to make the spots, and I added a chrome powder. And I did the same thing here in a demonstration where I forgot to, well, I, I messed up my recording, so I didn't get to demonstrate for you how I did the spots. And here is today's nail, and I think I'm starting to get a pretty consistent result. And now the tell, the reveal, is going to be top coating. I'm going to cure this, and we'll see how this final result comes out, and I'll compare it to the others. Okay, it's finished now, and here are the first four. I'm not even going to bother showing the green nail anymore. This is, I'll call this number two, official Jaguar. Number three, four, and five. And here is the nail that I just did again. And I'm going to put it next to these. Whoops. And just like the cats, every nail is a little bit different. I think that these two kind of look the closest. With this one, I was working only with the dry watercolor. I think I like that result the best, but it takes a little while to get it to the right consistency. I like where I used a little bit more of the chrome powder versus this one where I used a little bit less. I wanted to see how that would come out. I like a little bit of uh, glow and glitter to it. But I think it, I think it came out all right. And when you get this down, I think that <clears throat> you could offer this uh, with your service and, and give your customers something that they're not going to be able to get at all the other shops. I mean, sure, everybody can do a leopard, and you can find uh, nail stamps, you know, the plates in a lot of other animal patterns. But as I said, I've been searching for a jaguar and I couldn't find that. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. <laughs>